Hi folks, Dr. Chapman here. In this video, we're gonna explore Grand Teton National Park and learn about Cratons, the Teton Fault, and the formation of Jackson Hole. Grand Teton National Park in Western Wyoming is famous for its alpine scenery, but it also exposes some of the oldest rocks in North America, metamorphic rocks that formed 2.8 billion years ago during the Archean Eon. These ancient rocks are part of a geologic province called the Wyoming Craton. Cratons are very old and stable parts of the continental lithosphere and often form the nucleus or core of the continents and of tectonic plates. Where the crystalline basement rocks that form cratons are exposed at the surface, they're called shields, like the Canadian shield. In most places, these basement rocks are covered by layers of much younger sedimentary rocks and are called continental or cratonic platforms. Almost all of the Midwest region in the United States is a cratonic platform. Until relatively recently in geologic history, the Tetons were also part of this platform. During the Proterozoic Eon, the eon after the Archean, the Wyoming Craton was sutured together with many other lithospheric blocks to form an amalgamation of geologic provinces, collectively called the North American Craton, or Laurentia. Laurentia is like an onion. The world is a Vidalia onion. Exactly. It's a lie, it stinks, and it makes you cry. Well, it has layers that you keep peeling away to get to the center. This tastes like the cow got into an onion patch. The pithy core of the onion is the really ancient Archean terrains like the Wyoming and Superior Cratons. The next layers are slightly younger terrains like the Yavapai, Mazatzal, and Grinville provinces that were added to North America between 1 and 2 billion years ago. The youngest layers, the skin of the onion, Can we please drop this metaphor? are the mountain ranges surrounding Laurentia. These include the Appalachians to the east, the Wachita Mountains to the south, and the Cordillera to the west. Geologists call the tectonic events that created these mountains orogenies and refer to the collection of mountains and basins related to these events as origins or originic systems. It sounds dirty, but it's not. For example, the Appalachian Mountains were chiefly created during the Appalachian orogeny with the assembly of Pangaea. Not only were the edges of the North American continent deformed during these orogenies, but in many cases, additional terrains or small crustal blocks were added to the continent. That's how continents grow, like snapping on Legos. The metamorphic rocks in Grand Teton National Park suggest the same processes were occurring during the Archean Eon, and the region experienced continental collision, similar to the orogeny that created the Appalachians or is still creating the Himalaya. Geoscientists know the interior of the Earth was much hotter during the Archean, and there are many unanswered questions about what plate tonics looked like in the past or even when it started. There's a growing theory in the geologic community that life may not have developed or even evolved on Earth without plate tectonics. The Tetons contain some of the oldest evidence for plate tectonics on Earth, and it may also help us understand what plate tectonics looks like on other planets with different thermal conditions. The rocks in the Tetons are old, but there are older rocks on Earth. Every year or so, a new study comes out claiming to have discovered the absolute oldest rock. I found it! But right now, the oldest rocks are about 4 billion years old and are from Canada and Greenland, part of the Canadian Shield. There are even older minerals that have been discovered in sedimentary rocks. Zircon crystals from the Jack Hills Quartzite in Australia have been dated to be about 4.4 billion years old. These zircon crystals originally formed in an igneous rock, but there's no traces of the parent rock left. The zircons were eroded out of the parent rock, presumably went through the rock cycle for 1.4 billion years, and then were deposited in a sandstone about 3 billion years ago. The sandstone was metamorphosed into a quartzite, but the zircon grains were more or less unaffected by the metamorphism. We call these crystal detrital grains or detrital zircon as opposed to primary or igneous zircon because they were part of the detritus that make up sedimentary rocks. The only thing on Earth older than the Jack Hill zircons are meteorites that form during the birth of the solar system and the formation of Earth itself about 4.5 billion years ago. The reason why very old rocks are so rare is because the Earth recycles itself. Hey, if you were a hot dog, <laughs> and you were starving, would you eat yourself? Through plate tectonics in the rock cycle. Rocks are transformed over time and their previous lives are lost to history. 
relatively thin and dense oceanic lithosphere is particularly susceptible to being destroyed because it is readily subducted back into the mantle. The oldest oceanic crust remaining on Earth formed during the Jurassic period, around 200 million years ago, which sounds old but is nowhere close to the billion-year-old continental crust. The reason we can even see the Archean rocks in Grand Teton National Park is because of the Teton Fault and the formation of the Tetons, which is entirely unrelated to the deformation and erogeny that produced the ancient metamorphic rocks. In fact, the Teton Range is one of the youngest mountain ranges in North America. The Tetons have been uplifting for about 10 million years and rapidly uplifting for the last 2 million years. Your love lifted me high. The Teton Fault is a normal fault that runs along the eastern side of the Tetons. The Teton Range has been uplifted about 2 kilometers on the west side of the fault, and the east side of the fault has dropped down around 8 kilometers for a total of approximately 10 kilometers of fault offset, more than the height of Mount Everest. The uplifted side is being eroded to form the ragged Tetons, and the downdrop side creates a hole or basin that is being filled up with sediment to form Jackson Valley or Jackson Hole. The Jackson Hole Basin and the Teton Range are the easternmost portion of the Basin and Range province in the western U.S. It's called the Basin and Range because it's full of normal faults that uplift mountain ranges on one side and drop down basins on the other. The Teton Fault is one of the most active normal faults in the Basin and Range province, and the Tetons are being uplifted around 2 millimeters per year. This is just an average rate, and it doesn't really mean the mountains are rising each year. Almost all of the uplift occurs during major earthquakes when the fault ruptures. The last major earthquakes in the region occurred around 4,600, 8,000, and 10,000 years ago, suggesting a reoccurrence interval of 2 to 6,000 years. Geoscientists use the timing and magnitude of past earthquakes to estimate the probability of future earthquakes and to help with natural hazard assessment and preparedness. I'm not emotionally prepared for that. Based on the previous episodes of faulting, geologists have warned that an earthquake as large as magnitude 7.5 could strike the area. Nearby normal faults in the Basin Range province in Montana and Idaho ruptured in 1959 and 1983, producing magnitude 7.3 earthquakes. These quakes are among the top 20 strongest earthquakes in the United States in the last 100 years. In some ways, the entire face of the Teton Range is one gigantic fault scar. But the Teton Fault can be seen in many places where it offsets young geomorphic features, including glacial moraines. A moraine is an accumulation of unconsolidated rock and debris pushed along or carried by a glacier. When a glacier melts or retreats, it leaves the moraine behind, like a high tide line. Many of the lakes in Grand Teton National Park, including Jackson and Jenny Lake, formed when moraines left behind by glaciers dammed up streams and rivers. Where these moraines cross the Teton Fault, they're offset by up to 30 meters. The youngest glacial episode in Grand Teton National Park is locally called the Pinedale Glaciation and occurred from around 30,000 to 10,000 years ago. The Pinedale is part of a global climatic event called the Last Glacial Maximum, or LGM. The LGM is one of five major glacial periods in the last half million years, and it's likely one of tens of thousands of glaciations in Earth history that has advanced and retreated over the landscape. The oldest known glaciation on Earth is the Yarkian Pongola Glaciation, or Pongola Ice Age, named after glacial deposits in South Africa. The glaciation is roughly the same age as the metamorphic rocks and the Teton Range. There's a poetic symmetry between the modern landscape, dominated by mountains carved up by glaciers and valleys filled with their detritus, and an ancient landscape, a three billion year old landscape we can only imagine but that may have had many of the same features. Hey, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos and share them with friends and family. Take care.